the numbers are rolling. <laughs> Good morning, brethren, saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. Still morning. 1158. <laughs> Brethren, thank you for your prayers. You know who you are. Thank you if you happen to see this. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a rough. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me. Read along with me at the scriptures we're going to be looking at today and considering. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Okay, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay, go ahead. Read along with me because I make mistakes. You gotta keep an eye on me. So get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, okay? Why do they do that? Why do they do what? Why are some of these people, some of these so-called Christians, what is the motivation behind their heresies? Now, for, for us saints, all we need to know is this. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 under 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Where'd you learn it from? Where'd you learn? Where'd you learn these things from? Hmm? Ruckman. Hmm? Ruckman. Just an example. Just an example. Where do you learn these things from? From men. From commentaries? See, God uses man, yes he does, by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes, yes, God uses man, okay? God in man, okay? That's prophesying today. But, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Who taught you? Where'd you learn it from? See, the doctrine of these Christians today is contrary to what God says. So when one of us, a saint, encounters a Christian or encounters someone who has been poisoned by Christianity, they look at us like we're the crazy one. Verse 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Hold your place and, wow, <laughs> open right to it. Basically, Philippians chapter 3, 18 and 19. For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross there it is of Christ because see the cross is death and nobody wants to die nobody wants to savor the flavors of death because why it's painful but as we have talked at length before in order for something new to come. Something old has to die. That it might chance of wheat and bear grain. See? Let's continue. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. They are enemies of the cross of Christ. Even though a lot of them will talk to you about you know, cross this, cross that. Have you been to the cross? See, that's important. That's important. Death. Through death 
comes life. It's like, Brad, wait a minute, think about that. In regards to salvation, okay? In order for us to be born again, we need to die. But too often that, that important, needful step is usually circumvented. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. And what's the belly made of? flesh and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things go back to Romans now verse 18 for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly they are their own God obviously and by good words and fair speeches Deceive the hearts of the simple. Now pay attention. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. Are you going to do what the word says? See, self-ethically, okay, you can have a saint who can totally disregard what God says and still go to heaven. But see, their life on earth as an ambassador will be shot. God will be ashamed of them, especially in eternity. Okay? I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but, I, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and there is none good but God, and simple concerning evil. Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. You know, discernment today is based upon the belly, in a way. A manner of speaking. Their God is their own belly. Isaiah 8, 18 on to 22. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Law and testimony. Law. Where do you get the law? The authorized version of scriptures. Testimony. Where do you get the testimony? Authorized version of scripture. For the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I just brandized that. Okay. See, the New Testament is the testimony of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? To the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, every one of us have light behind the eyes, meaning that we're alive. But this is a reference on to what? Jesus Christ, he is the light, okay? He is the light, all right? And they shall pass through it, hardly beset and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth. And behold, trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Look at verse 21 and 22. They look upward and cursing, but yet they're looking towards what? Things of the world. Their God is their belly. Their God is their belly. Now think about this. I'm going to give you some examples. And a brother brought this up. Uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the things we're going to talk about. For example, I'm going to use the, I'm going to use a name here, Jason Kool Aid. You ever heard of that guy? No, good. Keep it that way. Guy's a heretic. Jason Cooley is his name. Jason Kool Aid. Okay, 
Apparently, I have been told that this man disputed whether or not it was Samuel who came up at the behest of the witch at Endor, okay, and not the Ewok thing, okay, when Saul went to her, okay. Apparently, Jason Kool-Aid disputes that and says that that wasn't, that wasn't Samuel. That wasn't Samuel. And when you read the context, of that in Samuel, um, there is no scriptural evidence at all that even slightly suggests that it's anybody but Samuel that was called up. From where? Abraham's bosom. Why would someone dispute that? Now, now think about this. Now, like, like we already looked in scripture, if it isn't according to scripture, rightly divided, all we need to know is like, hey, skull and crossbones, stay away from it, and the Lord will reveal it to you later if, if he will. Okay, that's being simple and, uh, concerning evil. Okay, but why is concerning good? How many people out there tell you what is good and it's contrary to this? Lots. If it feels good, do it, right? But back to this point. Why would someone say, try to dispute that it was not Samuel that came up with uh, um, to speak unto Saul. When the text itself gives no evidence whatsoever to suggest that it was anything but Samuel. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Number one, Jason Kool-Aid does not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? He does not. As far as I know, and I, I'm not going to go that far, but... As far as I'm aware, he's one of these idiots who just believe and receive. Okay, that salvation is the same from beginning to end. That is not the case. Okay, that's that's dangerous. But why would he dispute that? If you dispute that it was actually Samuel, which it was, number one, the dispute the disputing is of what? Trace it back, Abraham's bosom. So if it wasn't Samuel that came up from Abraham's bosom, why would he do that? Because number one, he doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. And number two, to dispute that says to what? That heaven was opened before the perfect sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where did the Old Testament saints go? Did they go to heaven? No, they did not. They went to Abraham's bosom because the perfect sacrifice for sins, the perfect blood, the precious blood of Jesus Christ had yet to be shed on the cross. So when you got him coming around saying, well, it wasn't Samuel, it was the devil. Why? What's the undercurrent of that? Number one, he doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Number two, he's with the post-tribulation rapture. Okay? So see, when you're post-trib, as it were, you cannot be rightly dividing the word of truth. And if someone claims to be rightly dividing the word of truth and they believe in the power of the lies and rapture, it's, it's like it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So if you dispute whether or not it was Samuel that was called up from Abraham's bosom, he's disputing Abraham's bosom itself. And the root of that is that people in the Old Testament went immediately to heaven. No, no, because the blood of Jesus Christ had yet to be shed. Where'd they go? They went down to the earth in Abraham's bosom. And that's when, you know, after the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross, you know, the Lord went down to the spirits that were in prison, meaning in Abraham's bosom. It's like, hey, I paid for it. Blood's been shed. Now we go to heaven. Okay? So why would he do that? To justify, to justify, not rightly dividing the word of truth, that everybody went to heaven, heaven in the Old Testament, which they did not, which they did not, okay? All right? And also for the post-tribulation rapture, okay? That's why. That's why someone, because you got to look at the undercurrent. Another one, another one, okay? <laughs> the unpardonable sin, There was this, this Hermetic woman who I had correspondence with. I gave her links, showed her scripturally. We today, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? We today, people, 
Hey, Andy, you idiot. You're, you're lost anyway. You, you, you don't have to worry about the um, unpardonable sin. I talked about that at length. Why would someone dispute that, though? Why would someone dispute? Well, I believe that you can commit the unpardonable sin. Number one, why would they do that? Number one, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? See, this is where a lot of these arguments are answered with rightly dividing the word of truth. Mr. Kool-Aid doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. So he disputes whether or not that was Samuel, okay, to justify something that wasn't available in a dispensation. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. But why would someone want, want the unpardonable sin to be viable doctrinally for us today? Why? Think about this. Why would they do that? Why, why, why do you want that? Okay? Number one, Jesus Christ was the only one who said it before the death, burial, and resurrection. Paul makes no mention of it. Peter, despite what you Pentecostals want to think, made no mention of it. James made no mention of it. Okay? only one who ever mentioned the unpardonable sin was the Lord Jesus Christ himself before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? And he said, in this world or the world to come. Okay? Meaning present tense when he was alive on the earth and the world to come, meaning the kingdom of heaven. See, the unpardonable sin is only viable when Jesus Christ himself is actually physically present as he will be during the kingdom of heaven. And remember, the kingdom of heaven is all works. Okay? It is not by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven, people. Okay? It is not. But why would someone want to dispute that? Look at me. I'm so holy that I never commit the unpardonable sin. And the unpardonable sin is basically Basically, attributing to the devil what is of the Lord. Basically. Basically. You can get really complex about it, but that brass tax is more or less basically what that is. Basically. Why would someone dispute it? It's twofold, actually. Number one, it's like, well, I'm so bad that, I, you know, hey, I've committed the unpardonable sin. I'm so bad that I'm unforgivable. That's not the case today. What makes you think that you are unforgivable is that you don't want, you've gone past the point of no return, that you don't want to go back, okay? Because you're too deceived. And the other is, well, look at me. I don't commit the unpardonable sin. I'm righteous. And what are these both symptoms of? Self-glorification. That's why someone would dispute the unpardonable sin. I, that, that woman gave her the links, gave her scripture, and what happened was she kind of, she does not do this anymore, of course, but she would regurgitate the same argument into a different fra fashion and come at me, well, what about this, this? I said, like, dude, you don't have to worry about the unpardonable sin today. Why are you so concerned about it? Because what is the undercurrent? Self-glorification. I'm either too bad, or I'm so good. You see? See? And see, rightly dividing the word of truth. Samuel was called up from Abraham's bosom before the death, burial, and resurrection. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? The unpardonable sin was only viable when Jesus Christ is actually physical present physically present, as he was at his first coming, and then at his second coming during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Don't have to worry about it. And there's videos, and there's so much scripture where we have talked about that. But yet people don't want to accept it. Why? Because you want to glorify yourself. And another one. Why would someone dispute that the book of Revelation is not chronological? Why would they do that? Think about this. What's the undercurrent? What's the undercurrent? Okay. 
Would someone want to dispute it with the, when uh, Satan, Lucifer is cast out of heaven? No. No. No, 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 no. Because in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, why art thou fallen from heaven? Okay. But we also see in Job that Satan has to report to the Lord. Okay. Satan gets finally, finally in the book of Revelation, he gets cast out. And during that time is when he goes to be, to go into that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That's how that works. So would someone want to, I mean, if someone were saying to you, the book of Revelation isn't chronological to make that argument, that would be stupid. I even messed up on that in a video where we were talking about that, and I had to publicly uh, correct myself on that because I messed that up. No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Would someone tell you that the book of Revelation isn't chronological because of the great white throne of judgment? What do you mean? Think about that. Scripturally, the great white throne of judgment happens after after the thousand years. After. What happens after the great white throne of judgment? Death, hell, and sin are gone. The final dispensation, eternity, commences after the great white throne of judgment. Okay? Why, would someone be what, telling you that it's not chronological to say, well, the great white throne it happens whenever? No, 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 no. That would be plain old stupid. Okay? And most of these people who say that are a little bit smarter than that. Because if you're like to say that, well, the great white throne of judgment happens whenever someone dies. No, 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 no. No. Because what happens after the great white throne of judgment? Hmm? Satan, sin, hell are cast into what? The lake of fire. There ain't no more sin. Okay? It's done away. The new heaven and the new earth. Okay? So someone saying that it's not chronological to say, well, the great white throne of judgment happens at a different time, that would be stupid. No. Why would someone tell you that? To justify an erroneous teaching about when the marriage takes place that's why that's why to defend someone else's teaching that they have been brought up in to defend them still to this day that's why they would tell you that well, the book of revelation is chronological why would they say that what's the undercurrent to defend their favorite teacher still that's why that's why that's why. Because, like I said, if it was to dispute about uh, when Satan is cast out of heaven, that, that would be stupid. If it was about the great white throne of judgment, that would be even dumber. Excuse me, that would be even stupider. Dumb means not to speak. That would. I mean, even Mr. Sunk and I could have jumped on that one and been like, <laughs> Dude, wait a minute. <laughs> and he's not rightly, he doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Even he, if someone were to come out saying that, you know, to dispute when the great white throne happens, to say, well, it's not chronological. Even Mr. Sunk and I'd be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, okay? No, it's to contort, to confuse when the marriage happens, as taught by someone else. That's why. What's the undercurrent here? Why do these people do this kind of thing? Go to Jeremiah chapter 7. Go to Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 on verse 10. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly, uh, excuse me, for if ye thoroughly, for if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly 
execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. If, now, you got to remember, this is our instruction in righteousness. These are all works. Okay? These are all works. This is instruction in righteousness. Just so you know. If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Remember! Idolatry is always the extension of what? Self-idolatry, that you are your own God. Okay? Idolatry as worshiping a certain day, worshiping an ideology, worshiping a statue, whatever the source of worship that is other than Christ is an extension of what? Self-worship. Every single time. Every single time. Mark my words. <clears throat> if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your herd. And that's a little g. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Another dispensation under the law which was faith and works, eternal security was not there yet, nor the blood of Christ. Okay? you got to remember that. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye, now, look at this. Will ye steal? The thief boots the door out of the way of Jesus Christ is the door and climb up some other way. Murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and turn and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom ye know not and come and stand before me Ooh, in this house which is called by my name and say we are delivered to do all these abominations. Oh, wow. What is this? I'll tell you, basically, from the Old and from the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We are delivered. Do all this wickedness, all this stuff that is contrary to the Lord. Do all this stuff. Glorify thyself. You are your own God. You know better. And then, but yet, come before the Lord and say, are we not delivered to one? What is he talking about? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 12. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? That's spiritual. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate guys who act like girls. Okay? nor abusers of themselves with mankind, Sodomites. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. This is not talking about the physical kingdom of heaven. This is talking about the spiritual. We're looking at the context, okay? And such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit, capital S, of our God. We're delivered to do all these things. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Oh, Brad, you're talking about... Dude... Have you, have you looked at some of these disgusting Christians who are deceiving people? Have you? Have you looked at them? Have you watched any of their stuff? Hmm? All things are lawful for me. So, they come before the Lord and say, are we not delivered to do all these things? Well, out there... You live just like a devil, but yet you come into a phallus house and you put on the facade. It's like, hey, 
I can do all these things. All things are lawful for me. Now, this is undisputable. You can do anything that a lost person could do. Absolutely you can. But it's not expedient. It's not always a good thing. And see, when you're claiming to serve the Lord, and there's no difference between you and those of the world, to the point to where even those of the world, like, it, you say you're a saved person, and you're supposed to be different than me, but yet you're worse than I am! Hence, the vomitous fruit of, say, sleazy believism. They just, they are their own God. They save themselves, see? And then they go along and do whatever and make the lost see the actual Lord as something that he is not. 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Got to hit this again. Verses 19 on to 23. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. You can't have it both ways. You're either or. Lukewarm makes the Lord puke. There's no gray area. We know this. You need to be reminded. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. 1st Corinthians, this thing about the idol. 1st Corinthians chapter 8. 1st Corinthians chapter 8. Verses 4 and verse 7. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered and sacrificed unto idols, we know that the idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. And see, like I said, physical idolatry always comes from, is the extension of what? Self-idolatry. See, see, you people who twist the word of God, to justify your own thing. You're your own idol. And you're taking scripture and twisting it to justify your own means. For there, for though there be that are called gods, little g, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Okay? How be it, there is not in every man that knowledge. Exactly. So when you have someone who just saves themselves by their just belief, there is this well-fed imbecile, uh, Mr. Poet Man, that I've encountered who is just an absolute imbecile. Uh, I, I'm trying to be polite, and the, the, he's, he's the byproduct of just believe and receive, okay? Uh, and this guy is claiming to be a saved man, but yet is exhibiting all the behaviors of someone of, of the world. Now, like I said, we can't do that. But see, we are called to be ambassadors. We're supposed to be different. But see, Christianity comes along and tells you, you don't have to be different. Actually, you shouldn't be in order to win people to their little Christ. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. 
How many of you have encountered where it's like, okay, someone's claiming to be a saved individual, and yet they're at like a bar getting drunk, or yet they're like at a Hollywood movie or something. It's like you're you're claiming to be saved, and yet you're justifying the things that you you're supposed to be against. So someone who doesn't know is deceived, deluded by someone claiming to be something they're not, doing worse than they are. Hmm. Once again, Ezekiel 28. Because why? Why are they doing this? This is something that needs to be hit hard, brother, sister. Because it's growing. It's growing at a rapid rate. The self-glorification that these people are their own gods. It's growing. It's not stopping. It's growing uh, even more speedily, okay, with every passing day. Some of the people that I come across I hear on YouTube, looking at them, it's like, wow, dude, it's growing. And when you come across with a gospel that you save yourself and you are your own standard, that's why how someone can create a channel in 2023 and now it being 2024, and they have almost half a million subscribers. Christian. Christian. Ezekiel 28, verses 1 on to verse 10. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God. <laughs> Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man. <laughs> and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. And what do you think you are acting as? As you just believe and receive, you save yourself by your own belief. Okay? Catholicism of itself is obvious. Ought to be. Okay? Jehovah's Witnessism, same thing. Moronism, the same thing. But I am convinced one of the more dangerous heresies of today is exactly that. Easy believism. Because you are your own God. And, and on that, Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Proverbs 23. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Proverbs 23. Verses 1 on to verse 9. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What ruler? Put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Put a knife to thy throat if you're, you're hungry for the wrong thing. See, we saints, we have an appetite for the things of the Lord. But the false have a thing for what? Their God is their own belly. They hunger for earthly things. They mind earthly things. Be not desirous of his dainties. For they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, <laughs> so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Why? 
because he believes in his own heart. Scripture tells you if you believe in you, if you trust in your own heart, you are a fool. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. But see, you've replaced the God who is with God who ain't you. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. You know, there's, I'll go back to Ezekiel chapter 28. You know, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. There's our one dear, dear brother from overseas over there who asks great questions. Okay, to learn truth, then, you know, we go through scripture and stuff like that. And see, when someone wants to know truth, you ask questions, what happens is they get the answer and they are pacified with it. But see, someone willing to justify themselves, they keep that wheel turning. Like the woman who wanted to justify herself by keeping the law. Okay, you don't keep the law today. Okay, the law is not necessary salvifically to be kept to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, okay? You don't have to keep the law salvifically to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God, okay? That's another dispensation, all right? But see, in order to justify themselves, they do that. They do that. They do that. So... Someone who wants truth, eventually, the questions will cease. We still ask, but the specifics, when they are answered through Scripture, it's like, okay. But see, someone willing to justify themselves keeps that mill going and regurgitates the same question and throws it at you in a different way. It's like, dude, I've already answered it. The Scriptures have already answered it. You're just seeking to just, just justify yourself. And you, I, I've, been, I've encountered that on many occasions. Okay, they use a circular thing trying to find a loophole to justify themselves. Back in uh, Ezekiel 28, picking up at verse 3. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. By thy great wisdom and thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Ezekiel 16. Check this out. 22 under 32. And you see this, what we're going to be talking about uh, with the sleazy believers um, uh, live streamers. Okay? Ezekiel 16, 22 under 32. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, Thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare, and wast polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass, after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God, that thou hast built, that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street, making your own gods. Remember, Idolatry, physical idolatry is always the extension of what? Self-idolatry. Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Deck the halls, pal. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Thou hast built thy high place in every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be an ab abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Right that, that verse right there is a good rebuke against you uh, live streaming. Hey, if you're going to do a live stream, okay, there's no time and place for that. But if you're claiming to be saved and you're doing these live streams to invite other people in 
who believe contrary to the truth and to have a entertaining debate. You're a whore. You're a whore. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. One, one second. Okay, picking up again at in verse 26 in Ezekiel 16. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, those of the world. Okay, what does Christianity do? It tells you you've got to be like the world to win the world, right? Great of flesh. And hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Like why? All things are lawful to you, right? You can do, you can go and live your life just like a devil, but then you, how do you justify it? You go to your priest or your pastor and you have your moment of religiosity and you get your cleansing and you go out and do the same. It's a cycle of death. It's a cycle of whoredom. It's a cycle of whoredom. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee. Rome hates you. Catholicism hates you, and all her daughters hate you. Rome is the enemy. Okay? Rome is your enemy. I don't care who you are. Okay? And they diminish your food, and give you poison instead. What food? Okay? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. They give you something fraudulent. Okay? Behold, therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee. The daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. That one, that disgusting devil, one, me uh, one message guy, okay? He, in comparing himself to Christianity, which is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, and he's right. Is he, you know, and that's why he gets so many people. Because Christianity is a joke. And he comes along with this righteous looking thing that to the flesh looks righteous. Because Christianity is designed to be a laughing stock, to be easily defeated by what Satan offers. Okay? So, when that one message guy looks at Christianity, when an atheist, a self-theist, who's moral in their own standard, in their own thing, look at what Christianity is. Thou hast played the whore with the Assyrian, because thou wast unsatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet, Couldst not be satisfied. What appetite are you feeding? Appetite of the flesh or appetite of the spirit? Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou wast not satisfied herewith. How weak is thine heart. Seth, the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an, of an imperious, whorish woman, in that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. They are corruptors. Misery loves company. They take pleasure in those that do them. Mm. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. All these people are so willing to hear somebody else, but when it comes to the scripture, to the truth, we're the enemy. <laughs> 
Back to Ezekiel 28, verse 6. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Careful what you wish for. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am a God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Again, why do some of these people do some of these things that they do? To justify themselves, to justify their flesh, to justify their own thing. And one thing for us to remember, dear saints, Job, Job 9, just one verse, verse 20. <laughs> if I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I'm perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Now most people, you know, it's like, well, I'm not perfect, but you're your own standard, you're your own God, you go forth in your own judgment, you think you know what's best. Proverbs 24 Proverbs 24, verses 1 on to verse 4. Proverbs 24, verses 1 on to verse 4. Verse 1. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Psalm 73. Which, funny, I read that today. Psalm 73. Hmm. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Jump down to verse 19 and 20. But remember, how are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Hmm. Perfect in beauty. By thy wisdom thy ha thou hast multiplied thy traffic. Look at you. Huh? Look at you. Yeah. Proverbs 24 verse 2. Their heart studieth destruction and their lips talk of mischief. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Hmm. People will go who someone who wants to justify themselves and their sin will go through any kind of hoop, try to find any loophole, and then zero in on that. Second Corinthians chapter two, verses uh, fourteen on to seventeen. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ to them that are saved, not being saved, are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death. Think about that. 
You as a saint, you go to a Christian or you go to a self-theist, someone who is their own God or is their own standard. We come preaching the true Christ of the Scriptures, rightly divided. They hate it. They want their cake and eat it too. And their heart studieth destruction. These guys will search the Scriptures or their stupid little Bible in order to find something to justify their activity. That is contrary. Then they'll go to Jeremiah, uh, a portion of Jeremiah is like, well, this is specifically talking about one thing and you can't use that. Uh, what about instruction and righteousness there, pal? Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't count when it's something you want to justify, huh? Yeah. Yeah. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. You're reading the Bible, it says pedal, right? Corrupt the word of God. When you go around telling someone that they got to keep the commandments today in order to be saved or be right with God today in this dispensation, number one, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth and you're teaching something contrary for us today. You're corrupting the word of God. Hmm? But, of, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. Wisdom Knowledge and understanding. It begins with wisdom. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? From wisdom stems knowledge, knowing. From knowledge should lead on to understanding, departing from evil. See, like I've told you, there are two wisdoms. There are two wisdoms. There is the one that is from heaven, and there is the one that is sensual, earthly, devilish. Okay? Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15, verses 3 on to verse 9. Proverbs 15, verses 3 on to verse 9. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, Beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the lowercase s spirit. A fool who says in his heart there is no God despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. The house of the in the house of the righteous is much treasure. The house of the righteous. We are of the Lord's house. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, meaning the Lord lives within us. But in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. And that which is highly esteemed, and uh, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe those of you which who receive honor one from another and receive not the honor that cometh from God only? What am I talking about? These Christian preachers who will preach things to you to glorify your flesh, to puff you up. Puff you up in the wrong way. Being puffed up. Hmm. Yes. But in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Tell you what you want to hear. It's okay, don't worry about it. And they find a loophole. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Why? Because the fool wants to discover his own heart. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, 
But the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. But he that loveth him, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. And Proverbs 21, verses 10, on to verse 17. The soul of the wicked desireth evil. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked. How soon are they brought to desolation? There will be no remembrance of the wicked. Okay? <clears throat> I just lost my place. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. The righteous man, verse 12, the righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Dead in trespasses and sins. Okay? The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, departing from evil, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Dead in trespasses and sins. Here it is. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. And he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wine that comes from the Vatican. Pleasure. Loveth pleasure. Your God is your own belly. Feels good to you. Yeah. Proverbs 24, verse 4. And by knowledge... Shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches? Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2. Oops. Verses 10 on to verse 18. Proverbs 2. 10 on to verse 18. When wisdom, fear of the Lord, entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. See, knowledge is the byproduct, of, as it were, of wisdom. What wisdom? When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding departing from evil shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, the one who corrupts the word of God, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the path of upright paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman. Even from the stranger. Which flattereth with her words. Which forsaketh the guide of her youth. And forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house. Inclineth unto death. And her paths. Onto the dead. All roads lead to Rome. Pass on to the dead. Have your cake and eat it too. Be like the world to win the world. Proverbs 9, verses 8 on to verse 11. See, sometimes, brethren, we have to remember. 
sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. And when you encounter someone who wants nothing to do with the truth, reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Tell someone who scorns the Lord Jesus Christ of the scripture, but rebuke someone who is wise, has to fear the Lord and loves the Lord. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me, wisdom, thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Let's read verse 12. Thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. We are to be simple concerning evil. If it doesn't match up with the, with the scriptures rightly divided, avoid it. But, like I said, when you get, when you look at why why some people will do these things, what the undercurrent is, it always reverts back to the one thing that you and I as saints need to be attacking the most today. Because what is being offered them of Satan avoids, jumps over brokenness. Brokenness. True brokenness. That is going to be a short little video today. Um, like I said, I would, we've been, this has been a very rough couple of days here. And um, thank you, brethren, for your prayers. Thank you very much. I'm going to get this short little video uploaded, and um, hopefully this helps. And hopefully, too, this is also an admonition and encouragement to you brethren out there. And remember... Remember, we are not our own God. We serve the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. And we need to examine ourselves if something is taking the place. What, is, what are we extending? What is the extension of ourselves in our lives? Is it to walk according to the truth of Scripture? Or do we have our own little idols set up? Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video.